talk about something that, um, you know, probably a little, let's add more clarity to certain things I was actually talking about in previous videos. But here's the problem when it comes down to just people overall. And overall, it's it's a, it's an imbalance, root chakra. That's the issue that we're having. All right, and I feel like when everybody gets into the focus of balancing their root chakra, all right, then you go back to the primal nature of everything, the primitive nature of things. And why I say primal, primitive, I mean prime or primital, means uh, in Latin, first or primary, the number one, the source, the root core of things, right? You even get the word spring in Spanish is primavera. That means first. That's how you know that's the new year. And I made a video on the 33, which I suggest you watch that because it's actually going to explain everything I'm talking about when it comes down to bringing the new year into spring. Now, when you look, for example, when you're a child, you're like an animal when you're a child. All right. They treated you as if you were a little pet. You were looked after. You were so cute and cuddly. So they gave you a lot of like fuzzy, warm kisses, kisses and whatnot, but because you were cute and you shit and you ate. I mean, that's basically all you did. And you started to absorb your environment. Now, when you're a child, you start to look at, you know, the level of intelligence that you have. You're like basically equivalent to, let's say, a, a pig, you know? But the thing is that in this lifetime, you have the ability to be something much, much greater than the pig at that moment in time that you were in, but you went through that phase, through that stage. So, you'll also start to go through the stages of, let's say, you uh, believed in Santa Claus at one point, until you figured out, oh, my parents are Santa Claus. But then it comes a moment in time where you eventually even become Santa Claus. So let's say at the moment in time you're in now, let's say as a human, um, you're evolving, right? But, but you embrace the stages you're in. You don't try to you know, let's say from an adult, I mean, from a child, you're not going to go and become Santa Claus right away. You have to go through the stages of growing and whatnot. But the reason I'm even bringing all this up also is because animals, for example, they don't have a sense of eye the same way you didn't have a sense of eye uh, when you were a baby as well. <clears throat> so why that's important is because through that sense of eye, you have this, this ego, Okay, and this ego is something that I think becomes very, very tricky, especially through like certain topics that we have around man-made uh, diseases and imbalances and whatnot, or even ideas of uh, spirituality. Let's say what we talk about the um, the man-made diseases I'm talking about, for example, on a wide scope of things, is things like cancer, diabetes, and these things even have awarenesses around them like cancer awareness because they continuously want it in your psyche because if you believe in it and you believe that you have a possibility to get it you're more than likely to manifest it into existence and the thing is that the way that some people live life actually makes this a chemistry for disaster it makes this conducive to your reality and becoming an actual thing um because it's just nothing but an idea now, when you observe animals outside of you, animals are nothing but ideas the same way humans are nothing but ideas. So everything is basically a manifested a manifestation of what you have and the world is pretty much showing you what you are right back in return. So when you look at animals, right? Animals, they may tend to be survivalists, but they tend to appear to be fearful, right? And when when... You have an imbalanced root chakra. You have a lot of fears. You have a lot of insecurities. You have a lot of, uh, let's say, lack of trust. Because in order for an animal to feel secure in its environment, it would have to be, it would have to trust the environment it's in, plus the animals and people and things in the environment. When they gain a certain level of trust, then they walk around with a lot more confidence in their environment. And when you look at, for example, uh, hold on one second. When you look at uh, uh, humans, let's say if they have an imbalanced root chakra, 
is the same thing. They may have insecurities. They may have fears. They may have a bunch of stuff that, uh, you know, isn't conducive to their lifestyle. But when we look at an imbalanced root chakra also, we look at an imbalanced root chakra as far as structure, foundation, stability, money, right? Like the money part is important because this is basically the reality that you live in. And, you know, with the agreement and, and, and belief of the collective, this is the uh, means of value for exchange. So in order for you to live comfortable, you have to have good work ethics. You have to have, you know, structure, stability. But then you'll have the ultra spiritual person saying that, you know, money is is an illusion. Throw it all away. It's not worth anything. That's also an imbalance root chakra, you know. Because if you're discarding money, you're discarding all that, that's an imbalance root chakra. The same way you say it's an illusion, you're having money physically in your hands. And it's a real thing, right? But you say it's an illusion, yet if you say that's an illusion, then your spiritual energy, your spiritual lessons, all that is an illusion too. Throw that away. Matter of fact, give it away if you want. There'll be people who are more, more than glad to take it from you. Um, the same way they're more than glad to take money away from you as well. So there's a lot of things here as far as the words we use. I feel like language is one of the biggest barriers. Um, the ego is a big thing, but language is uh, uh, one of the biggest problems we have here. You see, animals don't have a language. Animals don't have a name. Animals don't have a sense of eye. You know, babies, they don't have a sense of eye. They don't have language, and they don't even have a name. They just are given a name, and they realize they have a name when they become aware of the fact that they are an individual, like their ego comes online. So animals you give them a name but they're not aware of their name but eventually through time they start to recognize the frequency of words or sounds that are coming out of your mouth so they start to respond to that and why uh this is important is because the same way animals uh you know they will it's it's like this animals out in the wild are animals in the wild they're living in a certain state but when they come into your home Right, the same way that you know you all of a sudden become Santa Claus eventually when you're a child, you don't know you're Santa Claus until you eventually become Santa Claus. The animals are basically living in a household with you, listening to language, experiencing humanity, right? But in this lifetime, it because the, the whole thing the illusion is the illusion of death, like there's some type of end. When it's not, it's just a transition or a transformation of things, right? That's why when you die, I mean, it's a transition, transform. But an animal, for example, has the ability to evolve as a human and realize that it was <laughs> the human the whole time. Do you notice how the animal takes on characteristics of the human that they live with? They take on the, uh, some, some even take on the appearance of the actual human. You'd be like, yo... Most owners actually look like their dogs, or their dogs actually look like their human. And it's pretty funny how that happens, right? But it's because they're around their human, but they don't have they, they have a personality, but they're they are given you're they're given an individuality by the by the actual person, the human. Because if they're outside in the wild, they're technically just they're like the environment. They are that whole totality of things. So they have to have everything. You see, notice how they, when they're in the wild, they're more like open. They're, they're more like their senses are all online because they're in survival. So they're more of the environment. I'm wearing these glasses because I've, I've, I've been coming out in the morning and it gets super bright over here. Man. But do you also notice how the animals, uh, when they're with you, now they're, you're, you, they have more of a personality now because they're individual. They're individuals now with you. So the same way a uh, human gains their individuality over time, eventually the animal gains their indiv individuality just being in the home with you because now you're giving them their full attention. And don't forget, the animal is you. You are the animals as well. All the animals that you interact with, they are you. Um, here's another thing. If you notice too, with imbalanced root chakras, I mean, I, I observe this through cats especially. If you don't like spay and neuter them, I mean... It's not like they can say, I'm going to practice no fapping or I'm going to practice uh, celibacy. 
it, it's like not a thing for them. They they are going to act on their uh, impulses, and those strong sex drives uh, will lead to basically the animals even fighting, hurting each other. Competition starts to come out of here, and this is where, in actuality, there is no competition. We create this competition when we have an imbalanced root chakra. If you're doing what you do and you're doing it with love, there is no competition because there can only be one of you. The problem with the competition is that you're trying to be like somebody else or you think that there's a scarcity of something so you're trying to acquire it faster than somebody else. See, with animals, it's like that too because animals are going to fight for, you know, reproducing. So they're trying to get the, the female cat uh, they're trying to get their rocks off on top of that and for food uh, It's the same thing. They're surviving because in the wild There's an abundance of it, but it also takes a lot of work and effort for them to go out and hunt so uh, The aggression comes out the, the competition nature comes out and competitive nature There's nothing wrong to all this. See that's the whole thing. There's there's a, a healthy fear just like there's a destructive fear and there's a healthy level of competition and there's an unhealthy level of competition. But the fear, for example, is debilitating and can destroy you. But it's also a healthy level of fear where you're in competition. Uh, that nervous jitter keeps you sharp, keeps you focused. Right? So that's the reason why uh, it's good to have those nerves, to have those jitters. They keep you sharp and focused. But the level of fear that's debilitating would be like, you know, the ones you dwell on, the, way, the ones you stay and let debilitate you because the longer it stays with you is, is you're starting to create an inflammatory in environment in your body already to begin with. So that's the problem. Like a deer gets chased by, a, by let's say, a wolf and it got away. It's not going to dwell on the fact that the, it's not going to feel offended or, or, or stay in the mentality that, oh, shit, I got chased by a wolf. I'm so stressed out now and starts to talk about it with everybody else, with all the other deer. And then the other deer start to feel anxiety and stress. And then it starts to pass it on to its ancestors. And then that's where this whole problem begins. You know what I'm saying? Once the deer gets away from the wolf, it just goes back to grazing. I mean, it just it's like it never happened, right? But it's the instinctual memory is there, which is why humans should have that instinctual memory of things. And that's about it, you know? When it comes down to humans and the, how they come into this realm, they come into this realm in an imbalanced root chakra already, even though they don't have a sense of eye. I mean, the moment that you get fed baby formula rather than, you know, your mom's milk, you're already uh, coming into an imbalanced state because you're getting fed shit that, you know, you can literally make rocket fuel from. But when you're drinking out of the mom's milk, you see your mouth, I made a video on the use your vagina properly. Uh, you know, eating overall is a sacred act. So whatever you're putting into the mouth of the baby, it should be the mom's breast milk, right? Because that's its most nature, natural, and connected to what it was in when it was in the womb, the mother. So the stability and the structure, of course, the guiding force is the father. And the father is there as a beacon of light and the mom is there to nurture in nature so when you look at the planet the planet is mother earth and the sun is the guiding force over that energy of the planet which is the chaos feminine energy of the planet you as the child even if you're an adult you're the same way as that baby that's you know basically sustaining itself off the mom but when you become an adult you become an adult you're, you're basically living your experience in the same way, except you're gaining wisdom and experience. But you don't leave that childlike nature, the curiosity or or anything like that. You don't stop playing. You don't stop interacting with Mother Earth. But when we become adults, we start locking ourselves in offices and doing crazy stuff that, you know, that, that gets us further and further away from love. That's basically what love is. It's connection, you know attachment but also detachment but the connection you think of is connection like you're holding somebody and you're having a connection with them spiritually or sexually or physically or whatnot and it's not really even that connection love is basically a chemistry is literally when 
you can when you can do this, you can take off these day lift glasses, right? Or you put on the day lift glasses, rather, right? You see through things, but you also remove the goggles and you can see the connectedness and every everything, like on a quantum level. There is no separation between you and the other individual. It, it was always an illusion, right? And we are here bound by time. Time is connected to the heart. That's why I said the projector is the earth. Because the anagram for heart is earth. Well, those words are interchangeable. You can rearrange those words around. You have a heart rate frequency. Your time is the same way. If you're having fun, your time will go faster. If you're having a bad time or you're bored or you're in a low vibrational state, then time will look like it's going slower. But time never changes. It's going the same way for everybody. You're just experiencing it differently, right? So the heart rate frequency is the same thing. The way you're experiencing your reality through your heart space, with the intellect of the mind and the brain of the fucking lower extremities, the gonads, which is basically the nucleus of this giant atom or cell that you're in, if you want to look at yourself as an individual cell, <coughs> then this is how you're experiencing your reality through this, through these lenses. You know, and that's why, uh, you know, you don't want to go through the through the phase of even saying. Let's say even very spiritual bypassing where you're saying, oh, I am God and I am all things and all things are me. And you become nihilistic. I made a video of it. You know what I'm saying? There's people who talk about the non-duality part of things. And they're just basically discarding everything. Discarding things as if as if they have no value. You should honor your temple, which is your body. Because if it wasn't for your body, right, you wouldn't be having this experience. You wouldn't be having these things you can experience like orgasms or the taste of chocolate or even experiencing love to begin with, experiencing your family. The same way I made in the other video, that you can look at the sun, the sun, if it didn't exist, there'd be no life here. But in actuality, if it wasn't for you, the sun wouldn't even be there. The same way the people you're experiencing are there because of you. But if it wasn't for those people, you wouldn't even have any significance. In the reality of how it appears, value, right? Because the reason money even has value is because people put money or the value on the money and everybody agrees to it, right? The same way, if a person has values because people would agree to value that person, that individual, that everybody's money, everybody has value, everybody is the money though. Because if it wasn't for people, you would have no money either because they're the ones that got to take it out of their pocket to give it to you in exchange for whatever services you're doing for them. And business is everything. Everything's neutral. You know, it's just supply and demand. But, you know, a lot of people, for example, you can look at this as far as diseases, right? When you got diseases, uh, these are nothing but man-made ideas. And I'm not a medical doctor. Do your own research. Um, I just create content. I'm, none of my stuff is backed up by medical science or medical claims. They're just me making content. So, you know, do your own research. But diseases are nothing but bad ideas. You know what I'm saying? But before I get into the area of diseases, I'm going to talk about the, the, you know, nothing matters outside of you and whatnot. And just kind of like discarding everything. Your body is sacred because your body is the body of Christ. And the key to living this experience is realizing love. That's why they say love is the answer to everything. That's why they say do unto others as you would want done unto you or treat your neighbor as you want to do yourself. Because when you took the goggles off and you can see that there is no separation between you and anything outside of you. And everything outside of you is basically breathing you just like you're breathing it. You know? That's how you realize love. You walk a garden. The garden is thriving and flourishing. But why? Because in your space, you feel a passion and you feel the love for the plants you love what you're doing you feel the connection between you and the plants to the point where you don't even need to look anything up to what's wrong with the plants you're gonna know <coughs> you're gonna know that it's all coming from underneath the root system there's something imbalanced that's showing an imbalance in the plant so the plant appears to have a nitrogen deficiency an iron deficiency a calcium deficiency whatever it may be but instead of going out to Walmart or Lowe's to buy some synthetic chemicals to put in there to 
fill in that nutritional deficiency, right? You address it from the root core things. Something stopped working. Either it got too hot, too dehydrated, the pH is imbalanced, and you get the microbiome working again the machine stopped working now there's no such thing as deficiency something got compromised either it got a drought too much have a thick layer of mulch you see how nothing ever goes in balance in fact you don't even have to become a slave to the land the moisture retains there until even if it's a month and a half later that it rains there's so much thickness of mulch there that it's protecting the environment underneath that you basically keep the environment stable see here you're as a human in this reality, it can get extremely hot, just like it can get extremely cold, or it can get too dry, right? Or too wet, or you'll drown, or too dry, or you'll dehydrate. So everything has to be stable for you to be in homeostasis. And if you don't do that, the body will find it for you. And it'll appear as imbalances. And then you want to go get medications to try to balance out that imbalance. But all you're doing is just addressing a symptom and not the root core of things. So that's why the root chakra is very important to address in all kinds of ways. This also bleeds into what I was gonna talk about, the diseases, they're nothing but bad ideas. You know what I'm saying? And they're bad ideas and they're, they're even categorized as human diseases because they came from the bad idea of a human. Notice how we even give these diseases a human disease name to an animal, like a cat or a dog, right? So. When a cat catches diabetes or cancer, we say that's a human disease. But why is it even categorized as a human disease to begin with? You ever saying? So if we're saying it's a human disease, what are they eating to begin with? They're eating table scraps. Human food that doesn't belong in their system. But humans get this disease because they're eating foods that are not even biologically appropriate for them. You get what I'm saying? And not only that, but it could also be just inflammatory attitudes and actions. Right? Because there's people who, who live to be 90 years old and they don't catch any diseases and they live to be 90 harmoniously and fine and only because they've been neutralizing the chemistry. So what do you do when you have an imbalance in the body? You neutralize the chemistry. So if you got a lot of anger in you and you got a lot of, let's say, anxiety, hatred, jealousy and stuff, you want to sit down with yourself and figure out how you can neutralize that chemistry within you first because you'll start attracting the same thing outside of you and it doesn't have to be even a direct mirror. It could be an indirect mirror, but it, life will show you what you are. And then when you sit there and start pointing the finger and become a victim and say, look what this person did to me, look what's happening to me, this person did this, this person is that, then now you're starting to stay in that state, right? And this is where I'm going to get into the next topic of, uh, you know, empathy and whatnot. And it's kind of like giving a poor person money every time rather than actually teaching them how to get out of that state, right? Because poverty is a consciousness and lack of abundance is also a consciousness because that's also an illusion. There's more than enough for everybody in this realm of existence that you live in. So when you look at lack, that's an illusion. There's an abundance of everything because it comes out of nothing. Because no thing, right, could be all things. So there, if you realize that, there is no lack. There is no poverty. All right. It's just the way of you doing things differently than somebody who has money or has, you know, the idea of spiritual heights over you. And a lot of people actually think that because they have more knowledge that they have more spirituality over somebody else. That's ridiculous. Everybody's enlightened right now. You just have to be present with what you are right now. And you'll see your situations clearer where if you know they're not serving you, you can have the ability to change because you shed a light on it. Because you're present with your experience. You're not outside of yourself. You're centered. You're in yourself. So you can see your experience is clearer. You shed light on it. You change it. That's enlightenment. But a lot of people think it's just, you know, doing drugs and whatnot. And then and then here's the thing. I ask somebody, uh, you know, I ask somebody, what, what, you know, this is a plant medicine, right? What do medicines do? Medicines heal you. So why are you taking this medicine? And I'm telling you, I saw them stump. I saw them stump. And that's where I say language is revolved around programming. Everything you can't help but to form a mental picture, right? So in actuality, right, it's a plant medicine, but what are you healing from? So the same way, if you have cancer and diabetes, there's a way to neutralize this chemistry without having to take man-made artificial shit, right? 
because it's a man-made artificial bad idea. So when you look at, for example, plant medicines outside of you, like the herbs, medicinal herbs, they're neutralizing chemistry within you that's imbalanced, right? So the same way, for example, when you have cancer or diabetes, there's a couple ways to go about it. Like when you have cancer, right? You can go the neutralizing chemistry route where if your body has inflammation, acidosis, or is inflamed beyond measures, you don't go radiate the body, do you? Necessarily, you don't want to do that because what you're doing is you're destroying your body. It's kind of like when you take antibiotics, right? It, you know, when you, when you have antibi uh, antibiotics, it kills the bad guys, but it's also killing the good guys. So when you're doing radiation, you're killing your body because you're killing the good cells too. That's why your immune system is so weak, but there's a way to do it, right? Like when you have a malignant tumor, you know, a doctor could go in and take a tumor out. But if you go the naturopathic route, which takes time, you can actually allow the body to remove this tumor on its own or drain it out on its own, right? By changing the chemistry of the things you're doing or hydrating your body better. And it's going to hydrate these cells. Things are going to flow. Things are going to open up. Things are going to be able to move out. You're going to start to be able to eliminate acids and waste out of the body more efficiently, right? So when you have let's say a tumor removed, you may have said, okay, now I, I'm in remission. I, I got the tumor removed, but it didn't necessarily address the condition overall of what you have an idea of cancer, right? Because if you look at it overall, what caused the cancer? What if it was a problem with how you were treating yourself and your kidneys were affected to the point where it caused a malignant tumor, right? And, and, and upon removing it, you basically created a bigger problem only in the moment it appeared to be a good thing, right? Because you never addressed how you were eating, how you were doing things that caused that infl inflammatory action to begin with, right? This could even go down as far back as mind virus where you say cancer runs in the family. That's already the belief. That's why we have cancer awareness. All these awarenesses around certain bad ideas like this because if it stays in your psyche, you have a belief around it. This is how things become a thing because you believe in it, right? But these things, for example, are addressed naturally because you're a natural person. You're a natural, neutral human, right? And your body is of nature. Man comes from the soil, he dies, he goes back to the soil, right? So when you address it by observing how nature works, right? Because I just said you can observe how animals work, how animals interact, how animals do things gives you a blueprint of basically what your animalistic nature looks like. So when an animal is like over sexually urges and whatnot, they can't control that, but you can because you have higher faculties over the rest of the animal kingdom. But even those higher faculties could serve as a detriment to you, right? Because that's where I start to say that, you know, the ego gets online and even through this whole spiritual thing, you lack, let's say empathy or whatnot, which actually is a slippery slope. Because if somebody's going through shit, I notice that a lot of people say I'm empathic, and let's say, for example, somebody's going through things. You could be, you could sit there and be present with that individual, right? But, but there's a, there's a, there's a crazy thing that's happening here, and I noticed this. It's more or less to say misery loves company, right? And I'm not telling you to discard being there for people. I'm creating content here for you to actually look at both sides of things. Just like when I made the example in the previous video, where I said. Uh, you know, people who like to ta -ta 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 all the time and they appear, oh, that guy's a nice guy. He talks to everybody, but necessarily isn't really necessarily like that because that a, per a person like that could have you feeling really drained because sometimes you don't even want to talk to that person because you don't want to be rude. You stay there and listen to them and subject yourself to keep listening to whatever the fuck they want to tell you at that moment and you feel tired and drained after that. So when it comes down to the, you know, the person who has issues, traumas or whatnot, all right, keep in mind that this is no different than a disease they're holding on to a story that's keeping them in that loop or that state and sometimes addressing the story to them may have them realizing it that's how that's the best way to be there for them because i've noticed people want to feel the pain with them because don't forget upon this person talking to you you're kind of having a small out of body experience and you're putting yourself in their shoes and you may start to actually cry with them and believe it or not you doing this is empowering that scenario or that, that that situation a lot more by you participating in it 
and crying with them. Now, yes, when you feel and let things go, they feel better. But there's a difference. Some people don't let it go. They're just crying, but it's like they're addicted to it because they like the way it feels that people are basically more paying attention to them. This could be somebody who needs attention, but they're craving it and it's like an addiction to them. It's kind of like fear. Fear becomes an addiction to people too. And <clears throat> as much as I tell people that, they don't believe it. But look, even on a light level, people love to get a thrill out of watching scary movies. They like to get a thrill out of like going to haunted houses or being scared of certain things. Going through the suspense of things, right? So some people may not even have anything wrong with them. And they'll find something wrong with them. Like I have family members like aunt and, and fucking grandparents who used to do that. You know, they like to talk about their pains and whatnot because they feel like when the other person gives them that sympathy, they feel good, right? But that's the whole thing. They, they probably didn't even have anything really wrong with them because I saw them walking normal after this. And it's crazy because that's like they love the victim mentality, the victimhood of things, being in that spotlight where, oh, there's something wrong with her, let's be there for her, you know? It's an attention whore, like attention seeking. So that's an imbalanced root chakra in and of itself, right? You don't notice how like dogs or even cats, some, to some example, they're so needy. They always need that attention from their human, right? But not to say there's anything wrong with any of these things because this channel is for adults. So I'm sure that what I'm talking about, you can kind of understand what I'm saying. So the reason I say that you make that scenario stronger when you're feeling that pain out with that person because what are you both doing? You're going to both be crying. And when you cry, that's your essence. That's fluids coming out of your body. That's actually empowering the reality of whatever it is. If you're not, you know, able to let that scenario go, that's when it becomes parasitic and, and it becomes disempowering. If that person is crying and you're going to cry with them, right? Point out the story and be aware that, you know... <laughs> In a nice way, have them aware that they put themselves there to begin with, right? If it's a girl that's getting beat up by her fucking boyfriend, she brought that onto herself. But you don't want to tell her that, obviously, in the moment because they're blinded by their emotions. But since you're enlightened, you show her the way in the right way. But a lot of people want to do it in an ego egotistical way. And then this is where you start to... Uh, do it in a way where you're just, you know, go going with them on the on the on the you know addressing just symptoms rather than addressing the root core of things, which is showing them the story. But you're always gonna find the. I already said this in the last video. You're always gonna find the right words to say. You're gonna find the right things in in the right scenarios. Even when you when somebody asks you a question, you're somehow always gonna know. Uh, the right answers. You're always going to know the right answers. Um, even though you thought you didn't even know the, the answer to begin with before, you're going to know what the right answer is. And that's because you're literally a conduit. You're The same way you're supposed to heal somebody by channeling, healing high vibrational energy is the same way that you heal somebody when you find the right words or or the, uh, the answers to say to them. You get what I'm saying? Like you're always going to know. Um, what the answers are for them that's going to serve them and help them in that moment. That's you channeling healing energy and finding the right words to say by addressing everything from the root core. Do you see how that works? When you do Reiki, you're channeling energy. All that is information. So when somebody's down in the slums, you give them the right information and it's okay to cry with them. But if you're doing it and you're not aware, you're empowering that situation and then that energy is out in the open ethers for everybody to catch. It's just like, you know, low vibrations, low vibes. You affect the pool of the totality of things because it's a it's a vibratory contagion, you know, like a virus. Also high vibes. But when you're in this spiritual bypassing where you're in your ego and you say nothing matters, God is me and and you know, and we're in a simulation and whatnot. You know, this is actually an imbalanced root chakra, which is basically the foundations of where everything comes from, from what you're spilling out and talking about. Um, this actually uh, prevents you from going into a high vibe, a higher frequency. You get what I'm saying? 
and be aware that with high vibes and higher frequency, low vibes and higher frequencies coming. I always talk about about the power of neutrality, but in essence, that's why you know some people that I see, for example, that are super spiritual, they're I can't help but to feel some type of pollution from them. But then you got certain Christians. And it's like, it's such a gem and jewel to be around them. It's such a pleasure to be around them. You can feel that they're so high vibe. But because even though they're giving their power away to a God outside of themselves and they're not knowing that it's within them and then they make a formation of it outside of themselves, then, you know, these people are in a high vibe state. They're succeeding in life. They have very good structure, good stability. They got houses, businesses and whatnot. They treat people very nicely. And then there's those religious people who are very like hypocritical, who... You know, they're just, uh, you know, they're just doing it because they're afraid they're going to go to hell, right? But then there's the real true enlightened person who, like I said in the beginning of this video, sees the connection in, in others. And if you have self-love, right, you would never think, to, think to, hurt, to hurt anybody outside of yourself because you'd technically be hurting yourself. Everybody is you. That's why I even said in one of my previous videos, I actually love humans. I like talking to people, you know, I like humanity. I like challenging humanity too, right? But it's still coming out of a loving, rooted space, like a like a, a well-balanced mixed martial artist where they can go in the octagon and rip their heads off and knock their, you know, knock them unconscious. But at the end, you see the sportsmanship, you see the camaraderie and you see the, the connection, you know? And then the person can get up that got knocked out, wipe themselves off and just sharpen their tools and just get better. You get what I'm saying? They could just get better. Or it can take over them. You see how there's so many layers to different things? They got knocked out. Now they're never the same again. So now they're a different fighter because they experienced that traumatic experience. So now they're afraid to get knocked out again. So they, they fight differently now. You know? Or some people reach, let's say, the heights of money, fame, status. And they want to keep it there. So now they fight very safe. Not with that, uh, you know, reckless creativity that got them to that position to begin with, right? So now they fight real safe and just to protect what they have, their status and their belt. A lot of people have that with money. A lot of people have that with even spirituality or knowledge. They have cognitive diss dissonance. They can't let something go, right? They can't let it go. If I got knocked out, I would let it go and just see how I can get better. But I'm in a game that that's a huge risk is getting knocked out. So I can't be afraid to get knocked out again, right? I got to realize I got caught, right? That's a way of feeling, oh shit, I felt it, I know it, let me feel it, but then I let it go. I don't hold on to that because then that's going to affect me in the fight later. Somebody who's going to get into a fight with somebody, the mental warfare, if you let what the person told you get in your head, they now got real estate in your head and that affects you in the fight. And it's like that with everything here as far as like spirituality, diseases and everything in general. But you got to go back to your primitive animalistic nature because animals don't have a language. Animals don't have a sense of eye and animals ain't forming mental pictures in their mind by the words you're telling them, right? But they have the ability to form an individuality by being in your presence. So you, for example, are an individual now because the ego came online, right? But when you have dominion over the animal kingdom, that's you having dominion over your ego because your ego is the animal. And when you have dominion over your ego, even the animals have more of a connection to you. People will have more of a connection to you. That's true dominion over the rest of the animal kingdom is having dominion over the animal, right? Realizing that when you're in your primitive nature, you can see clearer the things outside of you and you can see the corruption and inversion and everything else outside of you. So that's all I wanted to cover for this video. Um, I'm, I'm going to be tying in other things to it, but this is basically the foundations of what I wanted to cover uh, and to wrap up and kind of like, you know, give you a couple of like, you know, clarity on things. It's not bad to be empathic. It's not bad to cry with people. It's not bad to let things go and, you know, just basically break down and cry, right? But also be aware of how you're doing it. If you're doing it because you feel sorry for yourself or because you're in victim mode, you're empowering that. And if somebody else is doing it and they're not giving you the light, then you're just feeding a low vibrational entity that's out in the ethers for it to just be. If somebody else is in a low frequency match, a vibrational state, that could be a frequency match for somebody else outside of you. So all you're doing is polluting the water. That's why I said in previous videos that some people are in such low vibrational states that they want to go into nature or live in like, you know, higher vibe states. But if you haven't changed yourself, all you're going to do is pollute the environment, you know?
the change starts with you. Even if you're in a low vibrational area, right? If you change, everything outside of you changes. And it, it, it would get to the point where scenarios and situations will happen for you. Where if that state is so low vibrational, you may get called on to live somewhere else. You may get a job change. You may have somebody gift you or even a property in a higher vibe straight because you just don't, you're not no longer a frequency match there, but you didn't have to lift a goddamn finger, right? It just happened for you. So here's the thing though. The same way if, uh, if it, like say you're in a toxic relationship, right? Like, like you say, how do I get rid of toxic people in my life? Believe it or not, when you truly change at the core, and you learn to accept those people for what they are because you know they're a piece of you and you manifested them into that reality that way. And I'm talking about this is not just information you can hear. You have to realize these things, sit with yourself and really reflect on them. You'll start to see that even those people will just fall off your life. You don't even have to lift a finger. You don't have to tell them to go away. You don't have to. They'll just somehow scenarios and situations will happen where they'll just merge their own separate ways and they're no longer a part of your life. So if you like, like and we'll talk soon.